Notion is a great tool to plan trips with. I'm sharing the template that I'm currently using with you guys and talk about what I found out while I was planning my trip to be more efficient in trip planning and some of the tricks that I use to get the most out of my holiday. Now, core elements of my trip planning is, first of all, is that I want something visual. I want a lot of pictures. I'm planning a trip, I'm planning to go somewhere and I'm going somewhere to see places. So when I built this, I was mostly looking at a way to add a lot of pictures and to visualize and feel like I'm already on holiday really adding to the experience instead of like having a dull list and then hoping that they become nice experience once I get there. Let's go have a quick look at the top page of my current template. And if you look at the top set, I put some essentials there, like the travel date, which is usually the one that I need to look at the most, like when did it start, when did it end, uh, a small reminder, plan enough, but not too much, a picture, I usually replace it with something related to where I'm going, but as said, I like the visual style and adding a lot of pictures. It gets me in the mood for holiday, stuff like that. And then on the side, I have a couple of sub pages slash databases. Locations where I keep track of all the places that I want to visit, places where I want to go eat, stuff like that. Travel details, which is just a list that I use to quickly get from A to B. Pack list, which is of course essential to make sure that you don't forget anything and expenses because no matter how much I tried, I can't go on holiday for free. When we look at locations, you see that there's a lot of entries and that there's pictures. Again, I do have like a table view in here, but most of the cases, I really prefer having a gallery. I like the visual style when I'm planning my holiday and just having images to look at that gets me into the mood and really gives me a feel about what I'm going to do. Now, if we open one, and I'll take Ken Susie, for example, there's a few fields that I added. Plan is a date field, and that's basically when do I plan to do it. Could be exact, like in this case, if it's dinner and there's reservations, I can put a time with it. Usually, I just pick a day and sometimes even like a start and an end day to pick a moment in the holiday where I plan on going there and I filter on that later during the holiday. And then there's two sets of selections that I have. First one's type and that one's to filter on things like restaurant, places to sleep, attractions and the last one is calendar hint and the calendar hint I filter out of the rest of the views. So it's mostly meant for things like I make an event that starts at the beginning of the holiday and ends at the end of the holiday. And I use that in the calendar view, but I don't use that anywhere else. And so I made a separate type for that. It's just a hint for me when planning. The rest is obvious, like the restaurants for when you're looking for food, sleep, when you're looking to a place to sleep, attractions for when you want to do something. It is something that you want to filter on. Then you have the city and area, and I'm not using it in my current plan because like we, we have just like a couple of places where we're going. But as soon as you start traveling around, if you're like in a large city and you're in the north side of the city, you don't want to see all the things that are in the south side of the city because you're not going to visit those anyway because then you will need to travel up and down through the city. This way I can filter on the location, part in the area, city that I'm at and quickly find out what there's to do that I had on my wish list or to-do list. Then expenses, which is a link to the expenses table. And that's just to roll up the costs so that I can see like, okay, if I want to visit that, I need to get a taxi. I need to pay entrance fee. I might need to sleep because it's far away. These are the total costs. And then when I'm planning, I can look at the cost and make smart decisions on what I might want to skip to stay in budget so that I can do the rest. And then finally tags, because you might figure out things that you want to group later and tags is a nice universal way to add that and then the rest of the details i put in the page inside the page i have things like a picture and i usually just copy and paste a picture straight in then next to that there's some notes that i had in this case for example i need to make reservation in advance because i know that can sushi is a place in amsterdam that if you don't make reservations like a month ahead of time you probably won't get a spot link to the website and a Google Maps. So in these cases, all just copy paste. This is a couple of minutes work when I'm doing research to just collect that information into one page. There's not a set structure. I don't like to really micromanage the locations. It's just collecting a few links, doing it quickly. 
And speaking of quickly, this is why I don't really use the cover image for the list behind. So if I look at the list behind, you can see in properties that I'm using the page content and not the page cover. And one of the reasons that I do that is because when I was building this, when I was using it for the first time, I had cover and I discovered that taking the time, like add cover, wait till the cover is loaded, say modify cover, then pick it, add the link. It takes a lot of time. So I avoided that and I do just a simple copy paste. Now, let me give you an example by creating a new page and getting a browser there. And then I'll search for Amsterdam in this case, because my template uses Amsterdam because I know that city very well. And say, for example, there's like a few pictures here and I want to have this picture as the cover. I just do copy image. I go here, I paste it, bike in Amsterdam. And then if I close it, it should pop up in the overview when Notion is done loading it. And there it is. And that's a lot quicker than adding cover pages. And when you're adding a lot of locations, that really helps. Another benefit of using this method is if you use the web clipper, so you go to a page for a site or something you wanna visit, and you use the Notion web clipper to add it to this locations database, usually the first picture that the web clipper adds is the thing that you want in this thumbnail. It gets done for you less work, more things to look at. I just call that an absolute win. Now we get to travel details. I don't know about you guys, but I get really tired during a travel day because there's so many things to keep track of. Trains, cars, automobiles, what track to be on, what gate to go through. It's all these details that you constantly need at your fingertips and keep in your head. So what I do is in Notion, I make one page where I add all these things in a time slot, top to bottom. And I'll quickly open it here. In my template, it has a few steps on it. First of all, there's a last minute checklist. So anything that I need to do before I rush out the door and there's no going back. And then under it, this basically just gives me a date and then I just add the steps under it. So you see, for example, train home to airport and I would add all the details in there for that train ride. What track to be on, what times to be where, what train to track, uh, maybe even a, a, a backup plan if needed. And by adding all these things into one page, you can easily, when on holiday, just open that one page and keep it open on your phone and scroll through it and get the details. Now, Notion has an offline mode, but I personally still make like a screenshot or an export a PDF of the whole page and share that with the people in my travel party so that even if my phone would die or I wouldn't have internet and Notion would bar for go out of style, I don't know what could happen. There's backups, so somebody else can open the same document. Worst comes to worst, you could even print it on paper if you absolutely want to be sure to have all these notes at the ready when you need them. Then there's Packlist. And Packlist is just simple. It's a long checklist of things that you need to pack. Now, if I open it, I put like a simple setup here where person A needs to pack all these things because pack lists are very personal. I didn't add a lot to this list yet, but I did add a quick button that says add extra person. And if you click on that, you get like a second block and you can name that person and make them add that list. I prefer having these separate lists in Notion and not to add it to something like a task list app because when I'm packing, I just wanna open my phone, have like the full list and see all the things that I scratch through. And I'm like, okay, that is already in a bag. I also usually order this by what I need to pack into what bag. And that means that I can focus on getting a certain bag packed. And then once it's packed, I can put it near the door and say like, that bag is done. I don't need to think about it. And then usually I just start with like the big bags that I don't need to access very often, like clothing. And then I finally finish with the bags that have like my electronics in it. So my camera, uh, other things like tablets or the switch. And that makes like the packing process easier for me. Then we get to expenses. And expenses is something I don't want to spend too much time on. And my table is very simple. So it just has the name of the expense. And I use the page that's related to it to add details like receipts or agreements I made with set instance, reservation numbers, stuff like that. 
and then I have costs next to it because there's usually a price assigned to it. Finally, there's related because I might want to relate it to a location because some locations have like multiple costs to them and I want to roll them up and make a planning decision as mentioned earlier in this video. You could add a lot of stuff to this, like assign it to people or make it a bit more complex with a to-do done, you know, optional, things like that, filtering out. So now I get to my travel plan. I'm using the locations that I have to sort on due date and that allows me to get this nice plan that shows me the first, the middle steps and the end of my holiday. And it gives me like a quick timeline overview. Some people use tags and days. So for example, like Saturday and Sunday, Monday to give like a board view where you can like see the days next to each other. And that's like a different take on the same thing. I prefer using dates because it allows me to filter on dates. I can say things like show me everything that's scheduled for today. And if I make a view in here, that means that I can just open Notion, see what's scheduled for that day and do that. Now, if I do need to make changes during my holiday, I can always go to locations and then I have the planning view in here. And the planning view is just a calendar view and it shows me the days that I have. Say, for example, I can't do this one on Tuesday. I can just drag it to Wednesday and done. This is useful if you're having to rearrange a lot of things, though I would recommend that if you're spending a lot of time rearranging a lot of things and not just changing one date, you might have planned too much and you should down plan your holiday. Next to that is the My Maps view of Google. If you haven't used My Maps, it's a feature in Google where you can use Google Maps and build your own custom maps with icons on it. Now, if you look in the example that I made here, it shows different locations like the airport, which has an icon to it, places where I can sleep. And as you can see, by clicking on it, I get all the information from that location on the site. It's super useful. But how to edit this, how to make this feature and get it embedded. I put a link in the template for it to bring you to Google My Maps. And when you get to Google My Maps, you see something like this now this one already has some data in it yours might be empty there's a few quick tips that i want to give if you're using this for the first time one thing is to make layers and why do you want to make layers is because each layer has an option you can either choose a uniform style which means that you get the same icon for everything you add in that layer or you can use individual styles meaning that you can tweak the icons for everything and why you want to split those up is because usually you have a couple of places to sleep and you have a couple of restaurants you want to visit and let's see which one else i add attractions so like all the attractions are like on different spots you don't really care which one is which you just want to know if they're nearby and then make a spot decision at that point in time so by adding a layer i can very quickly start filling this map if i want to add for example a restaurant i can just search for a restaurant in amsterdam and it will pop up all these things and let's say for example i want to add gogo's cafe to it i've got this one selected you can see the blue bar on the side click add the map done this one is added and then you can see it on the side there so that makes it very quick to add like a lot of locations that you find interesting to this map and quickly fill it up with icons meaning that if you're on holiday and you have this app on your phone you can just say current location and see what's like in a short radius walking distance things that you thought were interesting really helps during your holiday give or take because you still would need some kind of internet connection if you don't have an internet connection be sure to download this map to some other app because Google My Maps doesn't work offline like Google Maps does. Once you've built a map and you like it, all you need to do is embed it into Notion. And this is basically the same thing as with Google Maps. If you copy the top link in full and you would go to a Notion page and I'll just find a spot here and paste, you'll get the embed Google Map option. Click that one and Notion does its magic and you'll get the same map as I got over there. And then the embedded version has this nice sidebar where you can filter on what you wanna see. I'm going to remove this one and quickly go back to this. So for example, you don't wanna see all your points of interest. You just wanna know where there's food. You can de-click a couple of layers, quickly get to where the snacks are at. 
And then the last bit, I use the bottom of the page to just add tidbits about the holiday that I'm planning. So in the template, I put photos here, but I also quickly want to show how my current trip is looking like. Let me see if I can open her up. So this is a demo because I made a copy and I changed a few things. This is our trip to Germany and how it's planned. So you can see that we have the maps, there's places to go, and we added bookmarks here, like a bungalow where we want to add, like which place we want to stay at. Uh, I put some bookmarks down here stating ideas that we had, places, uh, things that we found in Atlas Obscura. If you're going on holiday anywhere and you haven't checked Atlas Obscura, be sure to do so. They have the most weirdest things to look at when you get there. And a quick outline that we did to do some general planning before I converted this into our nice little trip list over here. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps plan your next holiday. I hope that you have something soon, which probably won't be too far considering the whole pandemic thing going on. But it might also be nice to start planning ahead. I know I am. I'm planning a trip to Japan for next year and having a Notion page where we add all the details means that even though it's a year away, it doesn't feel like that. Like we're already constantly looking at pictures and planning and things adding to it. It's something which I really enjoy using Notion for. This is Tools on Tech. I talk about using tech to be more productive. I'm releasing a video like this every two weeks and I'm currently testing a phase where I'm adding like a two minute tips short video in between. So there's weekly releases on Monday. If you enjoyed what you saw and you wanna see more of this, then be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the YouTube things that we YouTube people tell you to do. And then just remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.